Hello and welcome everyone. Today we will be discussing about overview of IoT protocols with respect to Internet of Things. Here are the learning outcomes. Here is the learning outcome. By the end of the session, students will be able to categorize various IoT protocols such as uh, IPv4, IPv6, 6 pan with respect to the TCP IP and Internet of Things protocol stack. So it is the outline of this video. First, we'll be discussing about why do we exactly need protocols and then uh, we will get a deeper perspective into the TCP IP and the Internet of Things protocol stack. Then we will try to decompose uh, some of the basics of these IPv4, IPv6 and 6 pan application layer protocols in IoT stack. So it's a good moment for the students here to pause the video for a while and uh, think on and try to answer why do we exactly need protocols in any sort of information technology. So the reason why we need protocols is uh, in information technology, protocols actually set a set of rules uh, which are actually agreed by the ends of telecommunication network. and. Whenever we talk about protocols, they uh, actually specify the interaction standards between the communicating devices or the entities. And whenever we say that protocol exists at several levels, uh, and it is a very good point and it is very important to note that protocols exist at different levels in a given telecommunication network. Having said that, we can easily conclude that uh, whenever we are trying to set up a communication between multiple hardwares, whether it is, uh, uh, for instance, let us imagine like we are having two devices like device A and device B set up uh, at a very far away distance. Then device A, if we consider to be a hardware and device B is also a hardware, then uh, the protocol that needs to be set up between the in-between communication channel and the hardware is what we generally call as the hardware protocols. And uh, the sort of uh, protocols that we generally use um, at an upper layer of an OSI model uh, deals with some of the application protocols like IPv4 and IPv6, maybe uh, some sort of other protocols like HTTP and other stuff, which uh, lie in the TCP IP layer of the OSI model. Next, what we have here is, uh, 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 let us have a deeper look into TCP, IP and IoT protocol stack. So as you can see, uh, 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 here we have two columns. The first one being uh, the TCP, IP protocol stack and the second column being the IoT protocol stack. So here we have a head-to-head -head comparison with uh, TCP, IP uh, protocol stack and the IoT protocol stack. So what we are going to discuss today are the network layer protocols. So whenever we say that we have uh, some network being set up between two IoT devices, it does include these protocols called IPv4 and IPv6 as well as a 6 pan. So now we will be having a deeper look and have a, a much uh, detailed definition of what all these things are. So before uh, even talking about what are these IPv4 and IPv6, it's uh, very good thing to raise ourselves a question like what is an IP? IP basically stands for Internet Protocol which actually sets a numeric label. So IP actually stands for Internet Protocol which sets a numeric label to each of the devices wherever it is used. So for instance if I say like device A is communicating with device B, whenever you, uh, whenever the first device called device A wants to initiate a communication uh, towards device B, then A should definitely have some sort of uh, information regarding the address of B. So this is how generally we set up the communication. So it's a very much si similar to the case where you want to call your friend and uh, for raising this call or for setting up this call, you need to definitely have the knowledge of your friend's phone number. Similarly, whenever we say that we are trying to set up communication between two IoT applications or two IoT uh, devices in, uh, in specific. So whenever we are trying to set up communication between two IoT devices, then definitely we need to label these two devices with the help of 
some numeric ID which is going to be a uh, unique one whether the communication is uh, within the scope of a local network or throughout the world. So, when we talk about IoT devices, it is definitely clear, the idea is very much clear that we are talking about a worldwide network where our device needs to be identified. So, having said that we are going to identify our device over the world wide web, it is very important that we provide our devices a unique IP address which needs to be identified. So, this is the requirement of two IoT devices uh, talking with each other over the internet. Now, whenever we talk about IP, uh, we are most often aware of uh, an IPv4 version of the IP address which is generally found in the network configuration of a Windows operating system or you can find this by showing a command called IP, uh, IP config or IF config in whichever operating system you are working on. And along with IP address, it also displays something known as a MAC ID. So, this MAC ID is unique with respect to your device and every MAC ID uh, or every MAC ID that is actually associated with the hardware uh, can be associated with whatever IP address you wish to within your local network. But at some point, definitely uh, you need to uh, bifurcate your devices like for instance you are having maybe 1 lakh sensors set up uh, in your local environment maybe you are talking we are talking about an organization where you have set up uh, 1 lakh temperature sensors throughout the organizations where every sensor every temperature sensor is connected to a microcontroller whether it is 8 bit or uh, 32 bit microcontroller and uh, we can't call or link those mac addresses of these devices with the help of IP address, but we need to definitely assign each of these device MAC IDs with a uh, unique IP address as well. So, so what is basically IPv4? IPv4 actually stands for Internet Protocol version 4 as, as it is displayed on the screen and basically uses 32 bits to define. And hence, uh, when we say that IPv4 uses 32 bits, it's a self explanatory thing that uh, we are having 2 to the power 32 combinations uh, totaling around 4 billion uh, possibilities of assigning these IP addresses. Next what we have is uh, if we talk about IPv6, the name indicates this is a sixth revision of the internet protocol and definitely the successor of IPv4. It functions similar to IPv4 uh, like assigning the IP address, the remaining stuff like uh, what uh, headers and frame format, the working, uh, setting up the communication, whether it is connection less or connection oriented all the things. But along with this, we need to talk about one important point that is unlike IPv4, this uses 128 bit addresses. So, with this 128 bit, definitely we have 10 to the power 128 bits. So, it is a very, very, very uh, huge amount of IP address uh, content which can be uh, assigned to our devices. So, here is the recomposition of IPv4 address uh, where we are having 4 bits. This is a good example of uh, how uh, we generally assign the IP address. Uh, totally, we have 4 sets of 8 bits which are later classified into class A, B and C depending upon from where the IP addresses actually begin. And similar to this, we also have an IPv6 uh, address decomposition. So, the major difference between these two is that here we are having totally 8 hexadecimal numbers. So, the major difference uh, when we are talking about the frame format of uh, IPv4 as compared to IPv6 is that IPv4 uses just 4 uh, segments and each of these segments is uh, a combination of 8 bits and all are numeric. Whereas, here the amount of IP addresses, I mean uh, the decimal equivalent or uh, the binary equivalent of this entire possibility of IPv6 address is so long that we need to include hexadecimal numbers like this D, B and other things uh, which are prominent in the hexadecimal numbering system. So, the difference is very clear that 
IPv4 addressing is completely numeric and IPv6 addressing is based on some alphanumeric entities in its uh, frame format. So what is 6 low pan? So 6 low pan basically specifies a technology where it takes a large bracket from a standard internet level network and it strips it down by eliminating all the higher level complexity in such a way that it can be easily handled by the low pan networks. And similarly, it does the vice versa thing, uh, that is it can take those 128 bytes offered by the low pan network and later on convert that into the standard uh, network packet level size. So as a summary, what we can talk is 6 low pan is used for a wide variety of applications including home automation, smart grid, grid and industrial monitoring, uh, all of which involve a low power uh, requirement. Here are the references used for this video. Thank you.